Good morning, it's uh, Steve Hartnell here from The Free, and it's my privilege to give the, the message this morning. About 60 years ago, I got my first transistor radio. Such an exciting time. <laughs> I could listen to what I wanted, when I wanted, in whatever room I wanted. And But the station I always looked forward to hearing from was Radio Luxembourg, 208 metres on the medium wave, the station of the stars. And it was great. The music that you couldn't get on the BBC, you could get on Radio Luxembourg. And I thought when I became a Christian that I had to be tuned in to God, that I had to be aware and, and open to him at all possible times so that he would speak to me. But of course, that didn't make sense because he'd spoken to me before I became a Christian and convinced me uh, of my selfishness. It was him that drew us to a church that uh, coincidentally was having its first Alpha course ever. And we went on that. And um, and so bit by bit, I began to understand that God spoke to me in all different, in, in different ways. So uh, he would speak to me in, in um, on a Sunday morning, the message would be given out and, and it would seem that it was just for me. Or I'd read a passage in the Bible and it would really jump out. Um, or something I saw outside in nature. Uh, it was just incredible. It, it's limitless, the ways that God wants to speak to us because he loves us and he wants to be involved with us and have a relationship with us. It says that I am the good shepherd and the shepherd know my voice. Uh, they follow me. Did you know that in, in Palestine in those days that shepherds sometimes met up in the evening and put all their flocks in one field? And then in the morning when they went their separate ways, they would call their sheep and their sheep naturally followed them because they knew they knew their voice. Well, the church that we went to, we were encouraged to have words of knowledge and to pray for healing. There was an expectation that uh, when words were given out, people would respond, people would get prayed for, and we would see, see healing take place. And so it was, not always, but we did see some amazing things, incredible things. And then we were encouraged to do it individually. So we'd sit next to somebody, Lord, give me a word for that person that's encouraging. And it was amazing the amount of times that we did that and the people responded. And then, of course, we were uh, from the safety of the church. We were encouraged to go out and do it in other places. We went in teams to other churches and gave out words of knowledge. It was incredible. God always seemed to show up, even when we didn't feel that that we had uh, the things necessary. And it was because it wasn't us. It was God. So if we fell down, it was because you know, we'd made a mistake, but nobody died. And, and if it did work well, well, then it was great. We, we, were, we were blessed by that. And I remember being in India once and we were praying for a pastor who had um, a bad leg. And as we prayed for him, I had a sense uh, that uh, he was worried about one of his, native, one of his uh, relatives. So I said to the translator, which relative is he worried about? So he said, oh, his daughter's very ill. Uh, got massive high temperature so we started to pray for her then we stopped praying for her prayed for his leg jesus healed his leg then in the morning he came back and gave testimony that when he got home his daughter um was well and uh the the, the, the fever had broken but it was like it was it was miraculous and he was so excited about that and so we we, we god said to us or it seemed to say to us you go to India with an expectation, and rightly so, and you'll see people healed. And it encouraged me to have an expectation that wherever I went, hopefully that, that God will break into my day and point out somebody and tell me what to say. I just want to leave you with this one story. I was in Sainsbury's in London one day, and it, I, this old elderly um, West Indian woman uh, Drew my attention so the lord said to me i want you to go over there and pray a blessing over her because she's loved me all her life so i went over to this woman and i said look you don't know me but i just feel i'm to pray a blessing over you and she said i've loved jesus all my life and the reason you're praying a blessing is because i'm 93 today well that was a great encouragement anyway we continued our shopping and i ended up taking her home with her shopping and we prayed outside her flat and then uh, she said, oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to tell my family tonight that, and this was her words, the Lord has sent an angel to give me good good news. 
And I said, your family will get more upset that you, at 93, you got into a car with a strange man. Um, and she said, no. She said, when you started to walk towards me, she said, I said to the Lord, who is this man? And the Holy Spirit said to me, he's a man of God and he has a message for you. And I want you to hear what that message is. So what started out as a normal morning shopping turned out to be a double blessing. I was blessed. She was blessed. And uh, I often look back on those times and, and think how amazing it is that God broke through. So I just pr ask you to practice. You know, when we get back to church, just look in church, see if there's someone, uh, someone that you know, maybe ask the Lord for a word for them. Go over and give them that encouraging word. And who knows, you could end up being blessed and they could end up being blessed too. Thank you.